Hello, and welcome to Navigating the French, the podcast where each episode we look at a French word and try and see what it tells us about French culture. I'm your host, Emily Monaco. Today, I'm chatting with Emmanuel Rubin, a longtime food journalist and co-founder of Le Fooding. Emmanuel has graciously agreed to come on the podcast in English, but if you need some help following our conversation, a transcript is provided. Emmanuel is here to discuss a word related to the French conception of Sundays and how they relate to the family meal. En dimanche. All right, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Can you tell our audience a little bit about you and what you do here in France? Hello, uh, my name is Emmanuel Rubin. I'm a French journalist, especially a French critic gastronomic. I uh, work on a very well-known French newspaper called Le Figaro, and I'm the co-founder of uh, Le Fooding. 20 years ago, Le Fooding is a new movement of gastronomy in France. We try to change uh, French mentality uh, concerning uh, gastronomy, and uh, this year we uh, are celebrating the birthday of Fooding 20 years ago. That's a good, uh, good old age. Yeah, very good old age. And I think a lot of our listeners who are based in France and even uh, abroad are probably familiar with Le Fooding. You've got a very popular Instagram tag. You've got some amazing reviews on your site. Very useful for anyone who's interested in food. And you and I have had a lot of opportunities to talk about sort of the evolution of French food. And in one of our conversations, you actually introduced me to a word that I had never heard of before, which is en dimanche. <laughs> and so that's the word I want to talk to talk about today. So what does en dimanche really mean to you? What's the definition of that word? En dimanche. En dimanche is a little precious French word. It means uh, that things or persons or people are more beautiful, more elegant or more tasty than usual. This word, it comes from le dimanche. And uh, as you know, dimanche in French, that's Sunday. And Sunday in France, not only, but also in France, is a very special day. Originally, from Middle Age uh, till the Ancien Regime in the uh, 17th, 18th centuries, each person, each family, rich or poor, didn't work on Sunday because it's a free day, that's a blessed day, that's the day of God, that's the tradition of Catholicism. And uh, Sunday, we were going to church, and this day everyone took care of his outfit. The lunch was particularly very net. The ditches, the table, um, honored God, but also the family and all the friends that we received. And after Revolution Francaise at the end of 18th century, and with the birth and uh, with the development of uh, the French Republic, Sunday remained that particular day without church, really, but always free, and the tradition of a special lunch with a lot of dishes has long continued. And so, at the end, when a person is particularly uh, well-dressed or a dish is particularly well-cooked, we say that this person or that dish are en dimanche. I love that. And so it's this... Ah, that's it's, a it's, little bit pretty word. It's such a pretty word. And it's such a, it's such a unique concept because I think France has this really interesting relationship with Sundays in general because, as you said, you have this long history of Catholicism, but then we also have a relatively long, I mean more than 200 years history of laicite, of secularism. So we're separating the church and the state. There's no reason for Sunday necessarily to be this day. And yet even now, people who are not necessarily Catholic or going to church are going to get together with their friends and their family, and they're going to have a special long Sunday lunch. French is a long memory, is a long tradition and a long history. And there is a rupture in France with la Révolution française and the birth of the Republic. But in reality, la bourgeoisie in the 19th century and uh, now the Bobo uh, uh, continued the same uh, tradition that a noble part of French uh, history during the uh, Ancien Régime. But at the end, uh, we have the same tradition. That's just a problem with the religion. But at the mm -hmm. end, the tradition does the same things. Uh, that's the same symbol of Sunday. Just now, nobody goes to church or a lot of uh, less of people. But uh, there is always a tradition of this Sunday. 
except with church. Uh, nobody goes to uh, church now. That's the reality. But that that will be changed. We see. We spoke about that. I think even the Sunday now is not the same that uh, 30 years ago, because I think France is uh, now in the glo globalization world, and that's a right, problem for French people. Yeah, and this is something that you and I have spoken about before, and I think it's really interesting. So we're seeing this generational change in France, where we had, you know, you look at like baby boomer families, and they were going to be eating not only this big Sunday lunch, but every every day they were going to be eating maybe a four course meal with an appetizer and a main and a cheese and a dessert. And this is kind of the structure of the French meal that's protected by UNESCO in 2010. But now you look at the new generations, you look at, you know, Generation X and you look at millennials and people aren't really doing that so much anymore. Is that right? Yes, that's right. You know, during a long time, uh, the French meal uh, is really in part constitutive of French culture. And as you say, uh, that was classified as an intangible heritage by UNESCO. But I think really now uh, this meal is, uh, I would say in English perhaps, an endangered species, really. Mm -hmm. um, that the end, you, you know now, uh, there is a lot of reason we can explain what this, why this decline. But uh, really now lunch which was a very special moment of gastronomy in France, at the end. The time spent cooking is getting shorter and shorter. Uh, some observation for the time spent at the table, shorter and shorter. And I think because French now is um, in the open society, French is a country who discover globalization and USA is not for nothing in this situation. Food, and also the ways to take a meal are, are really in France Americanized, or becoming more and more Americanized. Really, uh, that's, and why? Because first, women work like men. Of course, it's a really not a problem. But the women were the ones who produced and reproduced our culinary culture. And now, they have no time. Because in the same time, the world, the cities, the companies go faster and faster and leave less time to people. Because the requests are more numerous, the TV, the sport, the travels. Friends are really uh, joined the leisure society now, you know? Alors, she wants some things, but she lost other things. Perhaps not lost, but friends gradually forgetting a part of itself. She loses friends. It's memory a little. I think like cuisine now, the French meal, la gastronomie is now more than as a hobby. Not really a part of our work life. That's, we um, spent a little time at the table. Uh, we are cooking during the weekend, but uh, that's an hobby. That's not our real work life. And I think it's beginning during the 19th of the last century, and there is a really, with the beginning of the new century. Now, it's, uh, France is a part of the world. And you know that's perhaps a problem, but uh, during a long time, France consider that um, it's a country with a lot of exception, cultural exception, uh, food exception. Now that's the end. For example, the burger, the hamburger, is one of the most favorite of the French people now. Most, most favorite dish in Paris, uh, all the famous uh, cafes, the famous Wessy, serves hamburger, more than steak frites. And the burger is the symbol of the fast food, of the street food. You are eating this burger uh, very quickly with your fingers. Uh, you are walking at the same time you are eating. And that's a symbol that France is now... Um, the French food, the French uh, meal is really a fantasm now. And that's perhaps why UNESCO classified this French meal. When this French meal uh, was classified, some people uh, said that as French meal enters in the museum. But that's really, that's the reality. You've raised some really interesting points here. Firstly, I think that 
what you were talking about cooking becoming less of this part of the of French life and more of a hobby. Like it's true that if you look at millennials, people like to cook, but they like to cook when they have time. And then a lot of the time when they don't have time, they're going to go on Deliveroo or Uber Eats and they're going to get something easy. And in France, it used to be that whether you felt like cooking or not, making dinner was part of the culture. It was part of your day. You had to do it. But you took pleasure in having this tradition that you were being a part of. Is that right? Yes, it's all right. But uh, now, perhaps during the Sunday, we have always, we take time with this uh, lunch. Perhaps during the Sunday. But the rest of the week, that's a fantasm, really. Uh, historically, the French meal was very structured. It is the heir to a meal built at the court of the kings. And then it was codified by the French bourgeoisie in the 19th century. It was structured in several sequences. There is the hors d'oeuvre with vegetables and vinaigrette. After we have entrée, called the starters, warm starters. After first ditch with fish, second ditch with meat, uh, fromage, entremet and desserts, and there was too a special attention paid to the table setting. But now, really, that's a fantasm. Nobody takes this time at the table. Uh, some, perhaps uh, during Christmas, perhaps during uh, to celebrate a, a special day, a birthday, or a wedding. But um, in the French real way of life now, everybody eats in front of a screen. One pizza, mm -hmm. one burger. If we speak about the famous cheese, this cheese, this sequence, just before the dessert, just before the sweets, the cheese has almost disappeared in restaurant and in domestic table. Yeah, and this is something that I think maybe Americans would be surprised to know that in any French house up until maybe like, what, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you were to go to anybody's house and you sat down for dinner on any random night, you would have a cheese course. You would have, it might be, you know, the cheese, uh, the cheeses that you have in your fridge. It might be a special cheese plate if it's a special day, but you're always going to have a piece or two of cheese. And if you go to homes, but especially I know these days, if you go to restaurants, this cheese course, which is so French and so essential to French terroir and to French producers, is disappearing. Totally. Right? The, most of the um, French restaurants don't propose cheese. There is no cheese now in restaurants. And when the restaurant serves some cheese, that's only one or two cheese. Or sometimes just one piece of cheese in a poor plate. Mm -hmm. But in reality, there is no cheese. And um, that's the symbol of the, of the end of our French meal. We'll be right back with Navigating the French after a word from our sponsors. And now, back to Navigating the French. When I was young, that was really a fault not to eat here all together at the table. That was a fault. Uh, we are well educated when you stay at the table with your family for the lunch and especially for the diner. Now, it's not a problem to eat in front of TV set, in a sofa. That's not a problem now. Uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that was a fault. And so that explains why French people uh, are more in the fantasm of uh, their French meal. That's just for me cook is now an hobby as tennis or golf. We are cooking uh, as a leisure during the weekend. And concerning this fresh meal, that's really a fantasm. And especially a fantasm in the spirit of the stranger. Because in France, nobody uh, discusses about this situation, except uh, some uh, food critics and foodies. But uh, yeah. most of people uh, uh, consider that... Uh, not a problem. There is some anecdotes. In France, there is a TV set program very well known that's called Top Chef. That's a culinary uh, show with uh, all uh, young chefs who uh, cook uh, in TV uh, during uh, some battles. I don't know where. I, don't, I have no TV set. 
Yeah, this competition, this Top Chef competition, very popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people watch this program. Very excited. Huh? Uh, these people are very excited with this competition. And they say, I hope this uh, uh, young chef will be the winner. And all French people are watching Top Chef. But they are watching Top Chef in front of the TV set. And in the same time, they eat pizza or burger or delivery meals. There is a total paradox. People are watching um, culinary competition program and in the same time they are eating some poor meal in front of the TV set. And then the French paradox and the French contradiction. And this program is a symbol uh, of the fantasm of uh, French meal and French cook now for me. Absolutely. Because there is this, as you say, this fantasme, this fantasy of the French meal. And we have that, we always had that abroad. You know, I grew up in the United States and I feel like my mother was always very proud because she had lived in France and she said, no, we in this house, we always eat at the table together. But that was perceived in America as being a very French thing to do. And the reality is that now a lot of French people have this image, this fantasy, this fantasme, that that's what they're doing, that they still have this structure and this tradition and these norms around their, their meal. But the reality is that they're sitting on the sofa watching Top Chef, watching these chefs compete, and they're not actually sitting down to dinner with their families quite so much anymore. Yes, that's also a question of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. That's a fantasm. And in the same moment, a nostalgia. And, uh, you know, in France now, we have this kind uh, of problem, not only uh, concerning cook or food or French meal, but all societies question about politics. That's always the same thing in France. We are very um, difficult to uh, consider our uh, history, our past and our reality and the world reality. And that's the same debates. Uh, discussion uh, concerning politics, concerning um, a lot of things. That's the real problem of French of France now. That's the end of our uh, culture, of our civilization. And in the same time, because of uh, nostalgia, we have a lot of difficulties to open in the new world, in the open society, in the globalized world. That's very difficult for us because we have too much nostalgia about our past. But that's mm. only fantasy. That's only nostalgia. The real life now is yet in the open society. But it's difficult to lose this um, uh, this past. Just a difficulty to lose this past, to say goodbye to all that. But the real life is now we are a, a nation between the nation. We are in the open society. And now we are... Uh, eating uh, some burger, some pizza, some uh, poor sushi in front of our TV set as uh, in England, as in USA, uh, as uh, the Cité Monde. That's uh, just, um, uh, how we say in English, for French people, that's a déchirure. It's a tear. It's a, a break. It's a break. It's uh, not all people. I think millennials don't ask this kind of questions. But mm. all the baby boomers, the boomers, and whole society is in this break between the end of our culture and the new world. And I think that's, uh, that's the most problem for the, the French people now, accept to uh, say goodbye to uh, his past and accept to uh, enter the new world. And you can have this, I mean, what you're referring to is this really interesting kind of society-wide nostalgia. It's not individual nostalgia. It's a nostalgia of a whole generation for this meal that used to be a staple, that used to be normal for everybody, and that at the time that we're protecting it and the UNESCO is already, as you said earlier, kind of endangered. But when you personally think about your own nostalgia for your childhood and this Sunday meal, what do you remember it as being? Did you have it at home or with grandparents, aunts and uncles, or was it just with your parents? I mean, what did that look like for you, the Sunday meal, the Sunday lunch? It depends sometimes with all my families, uncles, auntie, granny, and sometimes just my parents and my uh, four brothers. But each 
Sunday that was very important to each together. Mm-hmm. Really, during 20 years, till my uh, first step in the studies, I was with my parents and with my family each Sunday at lunch. Perhaps not each Sunday, but uh, two uh, Sunday by month. It was very important. Yeah. And that's not very important. That's as a reflex. Uh, yeah. Okay, Sunday I go to uh, my family with my girlfriend or no. Uh, okay, when I was um, my first girlfriend, one week uh, we are eating with my family. And next, uh, the week after, I was eating with uh, my uh, girlfriend's family. But that's real tradition. Now it's uh, totally exposed. My uh, my girl is uh, uh, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Perhaps she uh, is coming to take a meal <laughs> with uh, his family. Uh, perhaps uh, one Sunday. By doing, perhaps I don't know. It's really where Sunday decide to make uh, other things. But now it's that, that, that's the end. I'm not an exception that my family is the same of all the French family, and especially in the cities, perhaps it's different in Provence, in countryside, I'm not sure. But uh, in big cities, les, les villes monde, the world cities as Paris, that's the end. Really, this is a part of education. Now, we have no time. It's difficult to explain our children that this meal is a part of our culture because the real society is more stronger than our culture. But uh, when I was 5, 10, uh, 15 years old, it's really a part of education. You have to eat with your family. Yeah. It was really important. It's a time, a precious time, or everybody is in the same moment at the same table and we can discuss about our problem or uh, we can discuss about politics about nothing but we are together at the table and uh, that's not only a question of food but really a question of culture and that is such an important part of this meal is so i i first came to france 20 years ago i was 14 years old and i was living with a french family in the north and i remember that every single sunday I would sit down with the parents and the four children in this family and me, and we would have this lunch where we would start with an aperitif, and I was 14, so it was like a bit of pulco, it was like, you know, with the little with the little snacks, and then you have the appetizer, and then you have the main, and then you have the cheese, and then you have the dessert, and then you have a piece of fruit, and then you have coffee, and it would last for three, three and a half hours, and it was every single week like this. And that's only 20 years ago, but... You're right that as this generation, my generation, I was 14 then and, you know, now I'm 34. So my generation is the one that's supposed to be cooking. And nobody cooks like that in my generation. Nobody thinks I'm going to make a five, six, seven course random Sunday afternoon lunch. That's why I explained that that's not a real problem. But women work now like men. I don't know, but I'm sure that concerning, according to your experience in the north of France, that uh, women who are cooked. Yes. And now, they have no time. Women uh, want to have the same lives as men. 30 years ago, women cooked the Sunday for all the mm-hmm. family. Really, women were the ones who produced and who produced culinary culture. When she decided to... Uh, that's not a dis- woman decision, but uh, when society changed and women change in the same way. This woman wants a lot of things, but perhaps we are losing this l'instant de la cuisine. The culinary moment. Really, for me, that's not a problem. That's just a reality, a matter of fact. That's the way. And you know, uh, if women decide to uh, stop cooking, that's not men who uh, says so, no problem, I will cook. No, <laughs> men, <laughs> men forget. Well, I will say the longest Sunday lunch I ever went to, I went to lunch at 12 o'clock and lunch finished at 8 o'clock in the evening. And that was a Sunday lunch that was cooked by a man. And it was one of the longest French lunches I've ever been to in my life. But it was, I mean, it's about conviviality. It's about conversation. It's about sitting at the table. Yes, but uh, we are beginning by the lunch. 
at noon mm-hmm. with aperitif as you said and during three four hours we are eating and speaking about uh, politics about family about a lot of things but at um, 6 p.m all family decide to say oh so we are now we uh, prepare the, the diner so till noon till 10 p.m we are just in the table that's not possible now i, I understand that but it disappears. This French yeah. meal disappears. And this part of culture of French people disappears. And so in your home, do you still eat Sunday lunch? Yes. And what does Sunday lunch look like with you in, in your house? Yes, but that's a symbol of a um, relationship because some Sundays you are with your families and next Sunday you receive your friends and next Sunday these friends receive you and all the months each Sunday, you pass at the table, sometimes with your family, sometimes with family of your mother-in-law, sometimes with uh, friends. But each Sunday, you have a good meal and a long meal. Mm-hmm. That's not only a family symbol, that's always a relationship symbol. Because uh, everybody, we serve everybody. Yeah, it's a constant invitation of, yes. you know, oh, we're going to this friend's house and now we're going to grandma's house and now we're going to our brother's house and always moving around. I know that in restaurants, there's a, a lot of importance paid to the au de la table, the way that the table looks and the table setting and the tablecloth and the glasses. Is that true in someone's home too? Ah, uh, yes. The word en dimanche, you know, there is really a special intention to the table setting. That was very important on Sunday. Each day of the week, we are uh, eating in family, but usually in the kitchen. Yes. But the Sunday, that's not in the kitchen you reside. You reside in the salle à manger. It very, was very important to have a beautiful table. With the tablecloth, you know, there mm-hmm. is another symbol that's the tablecloth. Every Sunday in the salle à manger, you put the tablecloth uh, on the table. And now, in France, tablecloth is disappeared. And not only on the domestic way. In the restaurant, there is no more tablecloth. You know, the white tablecloth, which is a symbol of the French culture and the French meal, is disappeared. Uh, most of Parisian restaurant has uh, no tablecloth on the table. And it's a little symbol, but I think it explains this end of uh, special culture. And what will you usually make today for a Sunday lunch in your home? Do you cook a Sunday lunch? Do you have someone in your house who does, does a Sunday lunch? Or will you go out? What do you like to do? Two things. First things, I'm a food critic. So uh, on Sunday mm-hmm. lunch, I'm in restaurants. Yes. <laughs> but I'm a particular man. But with my family, I have three children, a little uh-huh. boy that's six years old, so he, he's very uh, little boy. And I have a um, great son and a great daughter. But it's not possible to uh, convince them to uh, share a meal on Sunday. It's very difficult. There are always some things to do. Sometimes we are, it's possible, but it's really uh, difficult. But with my parents and with uh, my friends, we are trying to uh, really one Sunday by month to make a big lunch together. But with my uh, children, it's difficult. Okay. Yeah. If your children are 20 and 18, yeah. I can't reproduce what my um, parents have learned to me. It's difficult, really. Yeah, because you grew up going home and seeing your parents for for Sunday lunch and with your children, they're 18, they're 20, they want to see their friends, they don't want to come home, they don't want to make time. Yes, but when I was 20 years old, I had to uh, take time with my parents. That's the rules. Now yes. it's impossible. So uh, perhaps because my children decide to uh, live their lives and uh, no problem. But 30 years ago, that's not a problem to live your life. You accept to, and you are really uh, happy to pass some time and especially a meal with your parents. That's a tradition. And now that's not a tradition. That's some of past. That's just a nostalgia. And sometimes we are playing 
to uh, this uh, Greek meal all together, but perhaps one or two Sundays by a year, and especially with uh, during Christmas time. But uh, really, that doesn't exist anymore. Perhaps in countryside, and I'm not sure really, but in big city, that that disappears. We'll be right back with navigating the French after a word from our sponsors. And now back to navigating the French. So we're losing this balance between like family life and family tradition and sort of the living, like you say, like living your life, going out and doing what you want, that balance that used to happen where Sundays were sacred, even though we didn't have the religious component of it, but Sundays were sacred for family, for tradition. That's kind of ending in France or has ended already. That's a pity for me. It is a pity. For me. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm uh, 52 years old, so uh, I'm not a young man. I'm not an old man, but I'm not a young man. But I'm, um, I'm the symbol of this generation who lives between the uh, past and uh, the present. It's difficult for my generation to accept, to lose a part of um, his education, a part of uh, his culture. And in the same time, it's important to... Uh, accept that uh, uh, your children uh, and the society opens in a new century, perhaps, but just difficult mm -hmm. to, uh, to live, not to accept. I accept that uh, uh, society is changing, but it's difficult sometimes to live because, uh, and especially when you have uh, 50 years old, uh, because you say, oh, you, you begin to have some nostalgia, some melancholia, some melancholy. It was a good time. It was not better in the past, but it was really a good time. And sometimes you don't understand why in um, a shorter time all this culture is disappeared. You know, uh, with the beginning of the new century, we discover that a lot of symbols of French culture disappeared. And it's difficult sometimes to accept this matter of fact. Absolutely. Not to accept, but to understand, sorry. I accept, but... Sometimes it's difficult to understand, but why? Why can't take time to eat together on Sundays or on Saturdays? Why? Sometimes you don't understand. You just, that's just crazy. But I accept. Mm. And we, uh, we'll see um, next, uh, <laughs> next step. Now, obviously, as we talked about, this Sunday meal is about a lot more than just the food. It's about what you're talking about, and you can talk about almost anything, you know, Uh, you can talk about politics, you can talk about art, you can talk about thoughts, you can talk about anything. But of course, we're all very interested in what is on the table. And do you have a favorite Sunday lunch menu? Something that you love to serve or love to eat on a Sunday? Yes. So um, that's always the same thing. My uh, mother is native of Burgundy. And Burgundy, la Bourgogne, is a very well-known gastronomic area. Uh, oui. And mm -hmm. so uh, my mother has cooked really uh, a lot of uh, Burgundy specialties. First, the les oeufs en meurette. Les oeufs en meurette is some eggs with a red wine uh, sauce. Mm. Very difficult to uh, prepare, but uh, very uh, exciting to eat. First meal, the les oeufs en meurette. And after, it's the le bœuf bourguignon. That's uh, beef oh, delicious. with a very strong sauce with red wine. So red wine with uh, eggs for the first meal, red wine sauce with uh, bœuf bourguignon, after cheese, and especially burgundy uh, cheese that's called epoisse. Oh, a washed rind cheese. Yes. And at the end, always just a tart. Fruit tart, depends on the season, but always just a simple tart. That's not a complicated meal, but that's my favorite meal because perhaps that's my mother meal, uh, my mother favorite dishes. For me, Sunday's meal is a uh, burgundy because uh, I'm Parisian, but uh, I have the fantasm of my um, mother's way to cook because she was a girl of burgundy. I prefer uh, and have a good souvenir of this uh, kind of Sunday meal. And of course, you'd have to drink Burgundy with that meal. 
Oh, oh, oh uh, yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Emmanuel, to talk to me about Andimanche. I only have one more question for you before I let you go. And that is, what is your favorite word in French? My favorite word is difficult. I love romance. 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 Romance is a particular word. You know, romance is a, it's a romantic way to live. That's not only a love affair, because when you uh, are in love with um, a woman, you live a romance. But romance, I think, I don't know, that's a romantic world. That's a world life to Paris. I think Paris is a romantic uh, city. And when you are in Paris, perhaps it's a fantasy too, but you, are, you live a romance. Absolutely. Paris is a, is a romantic city and you can live a romantic lifestyle here, whether you're in love with a person or just in love with the city or in love with a beef bourguignon. Yes. <laughs> or with a restaurant. Or with a restaurant. With a lot of restaurants. Restaurants with tablecloths? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Thank me you. today. And I sorry really for my poor it. English, you know. No, your English is wonderful. Do not worry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. This has been Navigating the French. You can find more from me, Emily Monaco, at Emily underscore in underscore France on Twitter and Instagram. This podcast is produced by Paris Underground Radio. To listen to other episodes of this podcast or to discover more podcasts like it, please visit parisundergroundradio.com. Thanks for listening and à bientôt.